Ahoy mates! More Tales new DLC, The Pirates of Balerion, introduces us to a massive new world filled with adventures, in which you navigate your own mercenary crew to treasure islands and deal with the lords of the sea with plenty of new gameplay mechanics. Since my previous exploring everything you need to know about it video, War Tales reached a well-deserved 95% positive rating on Steam. So you better believe me when I say the new update is amazing. And today we're gonna dive deep into ship navigation mechanics and upgrading your vessel to become the most feared pirate of Balerion. Your ultimate guide to survival at sea, filled with tips and tricks, dealing with pirate lords, essential blueprint locations, and so much more. So let's get to it. I first want to say a massive thanks to Shiro Games for making this video possible. It is once again an honor to share my knowledge about War Tales, my current most played strategy game of 2023 with now almost 500 hours on Steam. Be sure to check out my link to the Steam page for War Tales and the Pirates of Balerion DLC in the description down below as well as my pinned comment as there is still time to grab both at a discount to celebrate the update. Anyways, let's begin this guide with some essential tips and tricks, basics to get the most out of your adventures in Balerion, while further down the road we're going to cover more advanced stuff, unlock blueprints and get the most out of naval combat. During your adventures on sea, you should definitely keep an eye out for these long strips of shoals in the water, as if you sail through them, you will catch a ton of fishies. Automatically deploy nets if the ship passes through a shoal of fish, and if the ship leaves the shoal, it scatters and the fishing comes to an end. As a little bonus, you will also gradually find fish as the ship moves along, which is, in my opinion, an essential thing to do as you'll be spending a lot of time on open waters. While the lookout will constantly notify you of enemy ships like pirates and guards ahead. So if we open up our ship menu, this is where you can assign a fisherman and the lookout, which are, in my opinion, the two most important secondary crewmen alongside with your helmsman who is needed to sail. During your adventures in the Balerian Archipelago, you will also realize that at a certain point, your ship will take some damage. Right now, my sails don't look all too great. And if we open up our ship menu, you can also see that the part of this boat is damaged and no longer works, for which you're going to have to bring it to a dock to repair the damages done. Sometimes during a rest, you can also get an interaction where your crew members recommend to do some repairs. For example, with this one suggested by Ari, we get plus 20% fatigue, but also plus 20% repairs. So we will lose some of our fatigue bar without the cost of any resources. Look at that. We no longer need to repair them. But of course, now you're probably wondering, how do I find these wooden boards? But don't worry, I got you covered about this a little bit later in the video. When sailing, you might have already experienced that the wind is constantly switching directions. So let's quickly have a look at the map, as this will better explain all the wind directions. So we basically have different wind regions. Every part of the map is divided in those areas where you have a different wind direction. This one blows to the northwest, while this heavily blows to the south. So for my specific case, I want to head to Purbost Island to show you guys a couple more amazing blueprints to get your hands on to repair and upgrade your ship, including the wooden planks. Unfortunately, though, some of the wind regions are against my will, let's say. For example, the one which we are currently in, the wind right here tells me to go south, so this is going to be a little bit difficult. But the best way to approach this is to put your boat sideways, as then you can still profit from a little bit of wind blowing from the sides, and you are going to basically make way past the island. So you can take as much wind as possible, slowly get to the next region, as this one will lead us to the northwest. We can surf with the maximum speed all the way to this island, basically, and then we're going to enter the next region, which will blow us to the east, while we can safely travel to the shipyard with the current wind conditions. We could also take the short trip, but then we're going to have the wind against our will all the time. And in other terms, this will make the trip much longer, will cost us more wages. We're going to have to feed more mouths until we reach our destination. As if we look at this right here, we're going to have wind against us. If we go from here to there, you could surf a little bit sideways and reach this dock. While I want to get to this specific shipyard, 
So if we zoom out once again, I think this is the hands down best pattern to move in, which I'm going to show you right now. So if you turn your ship like 50% with the wind, right now we're almost entirely against it. See, the compass indicates where the wind is coming from. So now we want to make sure that our boat is rotated at least 50%. To get a green arrow, look at that. So right now, we're basically getting the most out of the wind without getting slowed down. So this is what we're doing. We're making our way like this, and then we're gonna enter that region while we wanna avoid collision with this ship right here. So I'm gonna quickly use my oars to gain some speed. And now we wanna take a short trip with a blue arrow to gain maximum speed to escape from this enemy. Not drift away too far, but you can tell that we're still in the green zone. So um, we're just going to keep heading towards that direction. And at the very end of this region, we're basically going to cross the next one and follow the wind to the northwest. Off then sees the guard in the northwest as well. So that is something we definitely want to be careful for. But look at that. The wind is changing its direction. Be sure to always have that double blue arrow for the absolute maximum movement speed, which is going to make traveling so much easier. So I'm going to make sure to get all the way to the western part of this wind region. And you can see that if we open up the map right now, the wind will slowly start turning towards the east. So we can basically get the most out of that, cross this region and get to the shipyard. See, the green arrow is pointing towards the right right now. So we want to make sure that we turn around our boat, make sure that we don't get that white line. We want to make sure that we still keep that green arrow on the sides to maximize our movement speed. I'm going to quickly take out my oars to reach the coast as there we have a lot of pirate ships right here. But here we go back at Perbost Island in the Beleriand Archipelago. So those blueprints which we talked about earlier, be sure to check out the shipyard of this island as this is where you will find Joannawin. Never skip on upgrades and repairs, mercenaries. If you talk to her, she will basically sell different blueprints to you. The blueprint for a triangular sail, as well as the blueprint for the rounded hull, which both gain you extra knots when sailing in different conditions. Also be sure to pick up those fledged projectiles, as you can basically use those to fire your ballista. Anyways, after you've picked those up, you want to follow the road to the main town of the Balerian region, which is Per Bast. Your quest objectives without doubt already introduce you to this town. While very important, you want to visit Master Necha's forge right here, as she will basically give you access to even more blueprints. So the first blueprint, which you can unlock right here, is the hoist. You're going to need this one to upgrade different parts of your ship, while she also sells the blueprint for a metal plate. After you've purchased both, you can visit the forge with your blacksmith and scroll all the way down right here to the new components tab, as right here you can find both the metal plates crafted with coal and iron, as well as the hoist for one rope, two iron, two coal and one grease. For the other blueprints, which we've picked up earlier at the shipyard, you want to visit your camp and check out the workshop and scroll all the way down right here, as this is where you will find the component tab as well with not only ropes, but also the wooden plank to repair your ship and hemp burlap, which also is required to do ship upgrades. Especially the wooden planks are very important to keep repairing your ship, for which you first have to craft a couple waterproof sealants. In a previous War Tales video where I explore everything you need to know about the new Pirates of Balerion DLC, I also shared the location of the waterproof sealant. This one can be picked up in a smaller town southwest of here in Zaulin. Be sure to visit the Apothecary right here, as this is where you can pick up the blueprint as well as many others. To craft those waterproof sealants, you want to use your alchemist at one of those alchemist tables found in town. Scroll all the way down right here and search for the component tab once again, as this is where we will find the blueprint. Anyways, let's open up the compendium and check out the sailing tab to do some upgrades for our ship. So for the triangular sail, we're going to need two ropes, three fin, three burlap, as well as one hoist. So let's craft one more burlap at the camp, which we're going to need for this upgrade. There we go. You're going to need the sealants for this, as well as the hemp. 
If you're still in desperate need of hemp, I think an amazing place to pick that up is the market on Perbalst Island, as right here you can talk with Feriris and he will usually sell a ton of those. I always pick up 20. You should also pick up all the resin right here, as this is also required for the next upgrade. So if we open up our compendium, look at that, we're going to need six of these fellas, while you also want to have the Saurian skill, for which you want to hunt for dragons, Komodo dragons on different islands, and for the fins, of course, you want to deal with sirens, also found across Balerion. So, very important, you don't need Kruxwine skills, but Saurian skills. And I think I already got 16 for one combat encounter, same counts for the fins. And yeah, right now you can also pick up the Arcadian Steel in the blacksmiths in this region. So for that, you want to talk with the blacksmith once again, purchase every single one of those. But very important, if you open up your boat menu, you can see that your ship must be moored at a dock to modify its equipment. So we won't be able to perform upgrades at its current location, which is near the shipyard. So instead, we're going to move to the dock, which can be found to the northeast of this island. Now you're probably saying like, whoa, for him, you left your ship behind. But there is an amazing upgrade, which you should get your hands on as quick as possible. I think it's one of the most amazing ones for this DLC. It's called Registration. As long as the ship is identifiable and for a nominal fee, of course, you can have it towed to save time. The ship can be retrieved from a dock for a cost in crowns that depends on the distance. So now the ship is on the other side of the island and with this one click, we can basically call in our ship for 135 crowns. Look at that. There we have it. Now we can also board the ship and do those upgrades. So now if we open up the ship menu, it says upgrade equipment. If we right click, we're going to need five wooden planks, while for the other, we're going to need four hemp burlaps. So let's get back to our camp, craft a couple more planks. Let's also go with one more burlap because I think we needed four for this. Get back to that menu, upgrade the equipment. Look at that. Now our ship becomes a little bit more powerful and the looks of it will also slightly change. As you can see, now we have that little red outline on the sides, performance is increased. But here we are back at the dock to upgrade our ship. So we're going to press B and we're going to check out our hull for the build equipment. We're going to need three wooden planks and we're going to need a couple ropes as well. I'm not really sure if I made the exact amount, but this should do the job. So if we open up this one right here, upgrade the rounded hull and this will basically further increase our movement speed when the wind effect is positive. While with a triangular sail, we will gain two knots with a crosswind. So when the wind conditions aren't amazing, this will still make us pretty fast on open waters. We're also going to repair the damages done with our wooden planks. And voila, right now our ship should be ready for future adventures. And look at the movement speed of this fella right now. That's amazing. So every upgrade you perform basically makes your ship look cooler and cooler. It's very important, guys, that you can choose between different types of sails. We have a square sail or a triangular sail. If you left click on the equipment, look at that. You will install the sail. So right now we have the triangular sail equipped, which gives us more knots with crosswinds. In other words, when the wind is not in our favor, while if you have a square sail, the wind from behind will be more interesting. So to get the most out of this sail is to basically sail zigzag because otherwise it will not be interesting. See, if it's right behind us, the wind, it will not do much. So you basically want to turn around and make it blow from the sides, which can be a little bit annoying from time to time. So I recommend you to basically go with the square sail, which you can already upgrade to make your ship amazing. I mean, look at this. We already have a green arrow when we have wind from the sides. So already go pretty fast. Well, if you have it in your bags, wow, this is extremely fast. I also want to give you some essential tips and tricks for surviving naval combat. Since we're already talking about navigating the seas, I think this definitely doesn't hurt mentioning as well, as these tips can help you resolve combat a lot easier, especially against those lords of the sea. So first off, what I think is a good one is to use your archers as openers. Take out those enemies from afar and stay at a close distance from your enemies. While if they made their first moves, I think it's very nice to then jump in with your tanks as final turns to basically knock them into the water. 
Another one, after you've tactically injured an enemy archer from afar, you can always jump in right there to land the killing blow. Especially your last turns on the first round can already decide the battle in no time. So be sure to keep those ropes on the ready, swing in to knock your enemies off their boats. This seafarer right here doesn't know what's coming for him, but after this guy has taken his turn, look at that, this guy instantly gets knocked off. This is also my final turn, so what I'm gonna do right now is hit one arrow on the leader and stand right here. We're gonna end turn, get a free Valor point, and after that we can or instantly take a turn, stand right here and trample their hands. Flips, ciao amigo, game over for this dude. If you take out a captain of an enemy ship, they will basically become stubborn. You won't be able to finish them off entirely. You are forced to duel them before they will accept their defeat. In this case, we have to deal with Captain Adelwis of this pirate ship that decided to attack me. Mistakes were made as half of their crew is hanging on the side of the ship, while Adelwis is still desperate for that duel. Since Vanessa is already engaged in combat with her, let's just hit her with a basic attack and bam, there we go, we now have a duel menu. This is where you have the option to choose between three different actions depending on what the enemy suggests to do. She says, you couldn't even hit me if I were tied to a tree. So this is a pretty big insult. So that means she is not really going to attack. She's just bragging about. So what I'm going to do this time is press the attack button because I'm pretty certain that they're not going to parry this time. They're just going to get a hit in the face. There we go. So that's already one life lost. Right now, Adelwis says, get off my territory. So that means she is kind of aggressive and about to attack. So in this case, you also see this offensive icon. So when an enemy attacks, you basically want to press parry, so you will avoid the damage. So this is not really an insult, but this is not really offensive either. She's basically preparing for the next move. In this case, she's not doing anything. So then you can do a little bit of taunting, basically get the upper hand during combat. But it's pretty simple. After you've used a action previously, you won't be able to use it again. So you always have to choose for one of the other two options. So for example, I can't attack twice. In this case, that wouldn't be very wise either as she is going defensive stance. So this would be the perfect time to taunt her and regain the upper hand. Another funny thing, if you use the same action as the enemy, in this case we're both doing the taunt, the enemy will basically gain the vexed status. This is pretty annoying because then they will not announce their next action. So then you basically have to guess based on the previous actions they did, what kind of action they're gonna do. Anyways, we're back on track. Is that all you've got? So right now she's gonna defend. I'm gonna just taunt her. So we're gonna gain the upper hand in battle once again all those insults we're gonna teach her a lesson take away one more of those hearts and voila now we're in the final stage of the battle she's going to attack that is for sure so we're gonna do a parry for this one and a nice thing is when you have the upper hand you will automatically counter attack instantly take out that enemy and there we go we just took Adelwis off the lords of the sea list Sweet, we get our hands on some pretty nice loot. Irian Bardish, a three-star axe. Wow, that is pretty amazing. As well as the protective glove. There's no shame in wanting to keep all your fingers. Oh, that's a good one. This unit can resist an additional hit in a duel. So, Adelwis, another pirate lord that sinks to the bottom of the sea. And I think that also concludes pretty much everything you need to know to be ready for your Pirates of Balerion DLC adventures. We talked about basic ship navigation, how you can deal with the wind, upgrade your ship and become the most feared pirate of the Balerion Archipelago. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button and also share your thoughts about the DLC in the comments down below. I'm very much looking forward to hearing your thoughts about all the new gameplay mechanics. While of course there is still plenty more to explore for us, which I'm going to cover in future guides. One of those which I'm already working on will be your full guide to unlocking the Ballista. Without doubt, one of the most legendary upgrades for your vessel. Well, right now I want to once again thank Shiro Games for making this video possible, giving me the honors to share everything you need to know about the Pirates of Balerion DLC. Especially to you Dylan, very much looking forward to covering more War Tales in the future. 
Anyways, if you haven't yet already, be sure to check out my links in the description and comment section to check out the Steam page for both War Tales and the new Pirates of Balerion DLC. The discount is coming to an end shortly, while I'm sure there will be more in the future, but as I already said, with almost 500 hours playtime, I can recommend the game anyways, as in my opinion, it's just one of those must-have strategy games. Anyways, right now it is 4am out, gonna continue on my adventures in Balerion. I'll check you guys in the next video or live stream. Take care. Peace.